Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling it like it is. Like it is. Like it is. Are we holding pure motives, showing that we can? The Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number three. We're going to begin reading at verse number five. Proverbs. Uh, chapter number three, beginning at verse number five. Listen to what the Bible says. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. The 84th Congress legislated a motto for America. Back in 1956, they legislated a motto, and this motto was to be placed on all of our monies, all of our currencies. It was signed into law July the 30th, 1956. This is the motto that is placed on all currencies in these United States. The motto is this, in God we trust. In God we trust. That's the motto of our nation. But that is not only the motto of our nation, it is the motto of every, every child of God. In God, we trust. That's the scope of our lesson today. In God, we trust. I want you to look at that word trust. In the Hebrew language, the word trust means to be Confident. It means to be sure. Are you confident about the existence of God? Are you confident and sure about the power of God? Are you confident and sure about the promises of God? That's what trust means. I want to ask you a question as we begin this lesson because it's very important. Do you and are you confident that there is a God? Are you sure? Are you positively sure that there is a God? Do you have any doubts? Are you sure that there is a God? Or do you just believe what mama said or what daddy said or what your relatives say or what your friends say or what the preacher said? Do you really believe there is a God? The Bible says this. Psalms chapter number 14 in verse number one, the Bible says this, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And I tell you, friends, when a person can look at the universe, he looks at the stars and the moon and the sun and, and the galaxies. He looks at all of this and says, there is no God. He's got to be a fool. You got to be crazy to look at all the magnificent work of God and and say there is no God. He's got to be crazy. He's got to be a fool. The Bible says. Well, an individual can look at the earth and the Bible says he hangeth the world on nothing. The earth is floating in space. This earth revolves. Every 24 hours, it revolves 
never late, never early. And it revolves around the sun every 365 days, never early and never late. If you don't believe there is a God, something is wrong. You got to be crazy. You got to be crazy to see all of this and say there is no God. And to look at your own body. Look at your own body and say there is no God. You you got to be a fool. You got to be crazy to look at your own body. This is what the Bible says about our bodies. The Bible says this in Psalms 139 in verse 14. I praise thee. I praise thee for I am wonderfully and fearfully made, the Bible says. How marvelous are thy works. When you look at your own body, when you look at the complexity of your own body and say there is no God, you got to be a fool. You got to be a fool to look at your eyes. Look at your eyes, how they can see. Look at the, your ears and look at your nose and your mouth. And, and you look at the complexity of your body and, and say there is no God. And, and say that maybe man evolved from a monkey. You got to be crazy. You got to be crazy if you say there is no God. You got to be crazy. i tell you something. Do this with your finger. You know what happens when you do that? Your mind tells your mind, your, your, you tell your brain to flex your finger. And when you tell your finger to flex, you tell your mind rather to flex your finger, the brain sends a message via the neutrons or the nerves in your brain. And these nerves uh, go down to the the spinal cord, and it goes uh, from the spinal cord and the nerves in your shoulder, and it transmit that uh, to the nerves in your arm, and then it transmit that to the nerves in your hand, and it transmit that all the way to the nerves in your finger, and your muscles in your fingers, and the tendons in your fingers, and you move and flex your fingers. All that is done in one one thousandth of a second. You tell me there is no God. Oh, how awesome God is. And real trust, real trust is believing and real trust is being confident that there is a God. Being confident that there is a God. That's what real trust is and being confident in the promises of God. When God says something, you ought to believe it. You ought to trust in God. Oh, yes, you ought to trust in God. I tell you something else, my friend. You trust in everything else. You ought to trust in God. I say you trust in everything else. You ought to trust in God. I tell you something. You go in the restaurant and you trust the cooks behind the doors. They bring your food out and you just start eating. You trust them. You don't know what they're doing back there, but you trust them. Yes, you do. i tell you something else that you do. You go to a doctor whose name you cannot call. And this doctor gives you a prescription and this doctor whose degrees you have not verified. This doctor gives you a prescription and you take it to a chemist. You are a pharmacist rather that you do not know. And this pharmacist gives you a compound that you can't understand. And you take it home and you take it. You don't know what's in it. You trust the doctor and the chemist. You trust them. Why not trust God? Why not trust the almighty God? You ought to trust God. Trust God today. Trust him. The Bible says trust him. Listen to what the Bible says. Not only trust them, but the text says this. We ought to trust God with all of our hearts. And God will settle for nothing less. 
That's what the text says. Trust in the Lord with all, A-L-L, -L, with all of your heart, with everything that you got. You better, be, you better trust God with everything in your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. God wants you to trust him with everything. 99.9 .9 won't do. 99.99999 still won't do. God says, I want your whole, I want you to completely trust in me. Put your whole weight on me. Trust in me. Believe in me. And God wants our complete trust. That's what God wants. There is something that's difficult in our text. It's difficult for us to accomplish and difficult for us to do. This is difficult. This is a challenge. To lean not on your own understanding. That's what the text says. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Or trust in the Lord with all of And lean not unto thy own understanding. That's a challenge. In other words, when there is a conflict, and there will be one day, when there is a conflict with what you believe and what God says, you ought to trust him. Let me say it again. When there is a conflict, and there will be one day, when there is a conflict between what you believe and what God says, you need to just trust God. That's really trust. That's trusting him. My friends, I got a prayer. I got a prayer that I'm always praying. When I come to difficult situations in life and when I don't understand what God is doing, I say these words, Lord, I don't understand. Lord, there's a conflict between what I believe and, and what you are saying. Lord, I, 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 I come to the crossroad now. Lord, Lord, I, I really don't understand. And, and Lord, what you are asking me to do, it, it doesn't make sense. But Lord, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to trust you, Lord. I don't understand it. And it doesn't make sense to me, Lord. But I, I'm going to do it anyway. I, I'm going to do it, Lord, because I trust you. And friend, you are going to come at the crossroads one day. You're going to come up against a something in your life where you don't understand what God is doing in your life. You may not understand a particular com commandment in your life, but you've got to trust God. You've got to trust in the Lord. You've got to trust him. Oh, yes, you've got to trust him. you got to say, Lord, I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to trust you. Do you remember Peter? And his comrades one day, Peter and his comrades, before they were converted, they were fishing one day. And I'm in Luke chapter five. And Jesus met them at the lake that day. They, they were just coming in early in the morning. They were just coming in. They had been fishing all night. I want you to listen to what Jesus tells these guys. He tells Peter and his fishermen these words. Luke chapter five and verse number four. And he said unto Simon. Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. Now that may seem uh, very, very simple to you, but to a, a Palestine fisherman, that seems ignorant, crazy. You know why? Because a, Pal a Palestine fisherman, Peter and those guys, uh, successful fishing was done, first of all, at night. They would drag the lake at night. That's when fishing was done. That, that's when successful fishing was done. But here Jesus is asking them to throw out the net in the day. Second of all, Successful fishing during that particular time was you cast the net, you get it in the uh, near the bank, and you cast the net 
near the bank of the lake where vegetation and, and, and insect would gather, and that's where the fish would be. You, you, you throw the net up against the bank, and then you draw the net, and that's the way you would catch a fish. But here Jesus is telling them to throw the net out into the deep, into the middle of the lake. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't make sense to them. Then this is something else. If you were fishing in Palestine and you're fishing on this lake with Peter, you wouldn't drag the, the same area over and over again. You just go on to a new territory. You don't repeatedly drag the net. But Jesus is asking them to drag the net in a location where they had already been all night. I can imagine what Peter and his, and his boys say, Jesus, do you know anything about fishing? Jesus, you need to stay, you need, you need, you need to stay to preaching. Jesus, let us fish and you preach because you don't know anything about fishing. Oh, Jesus made the fish. <laughs> I said, Jesus made the fish. He knew all about fishing because Jesus made the fish and he knew fish. But I want you to listen to what Peter says. I want you to listen to what Peter says. Oh, you need to listen to this. Listen to what Peter says. Peter says, in verse number five, And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. And I've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Did you hear what Peter said? Lord, we have been fishing all night and we have not caught nothing. Fishermen, have you ever been there? Have you ever been fishing all day and caught nothing? I've been there. I, I'm not a fisherman. But Peter said, we've been fishing all night and, and we have caught nothing. And here you are telling us uh, to cast back out into the lake that we have already been fishing all night. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I'm going to cast out the net anyway. What Peter was saying was this, Lord, we don't believe that there's really any fish out there. And Lord, we don't really believe that you know what you're talking about. Lord, we really don't believe, nevertheless, nevertheless, but I'm going to cast out the net anyway. I don't believe there are no fish there, but just because you said it, Lord, I, I'm going to cast out the net. This is what the Bible says happened. When they cast out the net, oh, when they cast out the net. The Bible says they caught so many fish that even the net began to break. They caught so many fish, the Bible says that the, that the ship began to sink. Oh, have you ever, been, have you ever caught that many fish? The, the ship began to sink. Oh, they caught so many fish because they did or because he did what Jesus said, even though he didn't understand it. What's the message, Gray? What's the message? Or oh, when you don't understand the commandment of God, just do it. Or oh, when you don't understand it, and really when you, when you don't really believe it, just do it. Just do it, and you will be blessed. Just do it. You're gonna come, there's going to come a day, my friends, when you don't believe in one of the commandments of God. There's going to come a day when you don't really believe it and you don't really understand it. But when you, when you don't believe it and you don't understand it, just do it. Your life will be blessed. Oh, yes, your life will be blessed. This is what happened to these men. This is what happened to Peter and his comrades. They did what Jesus said, and, and their lives were, were blessed, oh, my friends. I want you to look at that word lean in our text. Uh, trust in the Lord and lean, lean, lean not on thy own understanding. It means to put your whole body or to lean. Have you ever leaned on somebody? Have you ever put your whole weight on somebody? That's what it means. Lean. Don't lean on yourself. That's what it says. Trust in the Lord 
and lean not to your own understanding. The more we lean on ourselves, the more we are prone to fear. The more we lean on ourselves, the more we are prone to be stressed out. The more we lean on ourselves, you need to lean on the Lord. You need to trust the Lord. And don't you lean on your own understanding. I know some of you, I know, I know some of you got your degrees, you got, you, you educated and, and you intelligent and you got your PhD degree, your EDD degree, your MS degree, your bachelor degree, but don't lean on your own understanding. You can't lean on your own understanding because there are some things in this country that will happen in this world that your PhD and your MS and ED degree will not help you with. You're going to need the word of God. Now, don't trade in your, your degrees. They're good. Now, they're good. They're good. Don't, 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 don't throw away your degrees. They're good. They're good. Don't, don't, don't throw away your degrees. But don't lean on them. Don't trust them. You see the point. Don't trust in them. Lean not on your own understanding, as the Bible says. Don't lean on your own understanding. And the text says this in verse number seven. Be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes. OK. Uh, Paul gives us a warning in the Bible about being overconfident in yourself. And that's what this text is dealing with. Sometimes we're just overconfident of ourselves. We think that we can do everything. We're overconfident. This is what the Bible says. You ought to read it sometime when you have your spare time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse number 12, the Bible says this. He that thinketh he stands, take heed lest he fall. He that Think it, he stand. You better watch out. You might fall. That's overconfident. Don't you think you all of that? Don't you think that you are Superman and Wonder Woman? Don't you think that? Uh, because the Bible says he that think it, he stand. He that has the big head and he's as overconfident. You are setting yourself up for a fall. He that think it, he stand. Take heed. Watch out. You're going to fall. Don't think you're a superman. Don't think you're a wonder woman. You can't do everything. Don't be overconfident. Yes, there have been some strong men in the Bible and some strong women who have failed. David, he failed. Abraham, he failed. There have been other men in the Bible. They were strong in faith, but they failed. And my friend, you can fall too when you depend and you lean upon your own understanding. Don't do that. Don't do that. You remember Peter that night, he was overconfident of himself. And in the upper room that night, and Jesus says right before his crucifixion, one of you are going to deny me. One of you are going to betray me. No, Peter said he was overcome. He said, Lord, I, I would never deny you. Lord, these, all of these other boys, they might deny you, but I, I will never deny you, Lord. And Jesus says, before the cock crows thrice, twice, you're going to deny me thrice. Before the cock crow, you're going to deny me. And so did it happen. Denied Jesus three times that night. You remember? Kept saying, I don't know the man. I don't know the man. I don't know Jesus. I don't know him. Three times he denied Christ. Never said never. Don't be overconfident. Never said never. Then the Bible says this, if you look at the text. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In everything you do, you ought to acknowledge God. If you're going to really trust him, if you really trust him now, in all of your ways, you need to acknowledge him. In every area of your life, acknowledge God. Acknowledge him in your home. Acknowledge him on your job. Acknowledge him at school. Acknowledge him everywhere you go. Acknowledge the Lord. 
acknowledge him. You know, there are some people who are so strong at church. Oh, they're strong at church. They're spiritual giants at church. But oh, when they leave the church, they are weak as water. They're weak as water. But you ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You ought to take him on your job. You ought to take the Lord to the ball game with you. You ought to take the Lord to work with him. And if you go to Vegas, if you go to Vegas, take the Lord to Vegas with you. Yes. I know somebody said what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I don't care what happens, in Vegas, but you better take the Lord to Vegas with you. Take him, take him on your vacation. Take the Lord with you. Acknowledge him in everything that you do. And if you do that, there's a promise here. There's a promise here. And he will direct thy paths. If you take the Lord with you everywhere you go, acknowledge him in all of your ways, acknowledge him on your job, acknowledge him in school, acknowledge him on your, on your, uh, in, on your vacation, acknowledge him. The Bible says if you do that, he will direct your path. He will direct your life. He will guide you. That's a promise from God. God said, I'll guide you. And he did that to every patriot in the Bible. Every man that trusted in God, God guided them. He guided Israel from, from Egypt to the promised land. He guided David. He guided all of the men of the old, uh, Joseph and Abraham. He guided them. That's a promise from God. Somebody says, how does God do that? Through the word. Through the word, through the word of God, God directs us and God directs and leads us through his word. Listen to what the Bible says. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. That's how God leads you. Without the word, he can't lead you. Without his word, he cannot lead you. He leads you and help you make decisions by and through his word. Yes, he does. He will do it for you. And lastly, my friends, when you do that, oh, there's a blessing. There is a blessing when you do that, when you trust in the Lord and the Bible says there is a blessing. He will lead you. But this one last thing, when you trust in the Lord, then you will uh, trust him with all of your substance. He will trust you. You will trust him with all of your substance. Listen to what the Bible says. Proverbs 3 and 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. That means your health, your wealth, your money, your giving. And he, and with the first fruits of all of thy increase. Honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord with your money. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Honor the Lord with your wealth. And the Bible says he would do this. He, verse number 10, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. In other words, when you honor the Lord with your substance, your barns shall be plenty and your, and your presses will overflow with new wine. Look at that word now, wine, new wine. That's grape juice now. That's not intoxicating wine. It's new wine. New wine. In other words, God says, when you do this, I will bless you. When you give to the Lord, I will bless you. I leave you with this. There was a, a, a congregation in the Bible. Oh, they were, they gave, they gave, they gave generously. And Paul said they gave beyond their means. And Paul said they gave even in their poverty. And, and the secret is, I want to know what caused them to give out of their poverty and above their means. Here it is. This is what Paul says. Second Corinthians chapter eight and verse number five. They first gave themselves. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Have you given yourself? Have you given yourself to the Lord? That's what he wants. To give yourself to 
the Lord. He will bless you. Trust in the Lord with all of that heart. Lean not upon an own understanding. The message is yours today. May God richly bless you today.